military coup until now. Clearly, the next 48 hours will be an historic test of wills between the Russian people and the iron-fisted rule of the Communist Party. Outside the Soviet mission, Barry Cunningham, Channel 11 News at 10. The saying goes, those who don't learn from history are destined to repeat it. Well, there are now growing fears that events in the Soviet Union may quickly become a repeat of one of the bloodiest eras in Soviet history. Here's Mark Mooney. Government troops taking up positions in the streets. Ordinary citizens taking up arms in self-defense. And a leader exhorting the masses to opposition. What's happening in Moscow may look like a replay of Beijing's Tiananmen Square, but experts say it's probably more. You need to go back 74 years in Soviet history to review the last chapter of political intrigue and civil strife. The precedent is 1918 to 1921, and it's not a sort of thing. I mean, we, we think in the United States in far too short time frames. This is not going to, if it takes a bad bounce, it's not going to be over in a week or two. It's going to last for several years, and an awful lot of people are going to get killed. Nikolai Lenin's urban-based Bolsheviks seized state power from a largely discredited czarist regime under conditions of widespread food shortages, unemployment, and great power meddling. It took three years for Lenin to consolidate power and cost millions of casualties in bloody civil war. A former CIA official says that kind of chaos and bloodletting could happen again, only this time with a nuclear twist. If we do get into a messy civil war type situation, at least some of the protagonists are going to have access to nuclear weaponry, and that causes nightmares that I don't even like to think about. If the Soviet Union does break apart, its armed forces fractured into competing blocs, some analysts wonder if Western intervention isn't far behind. There is a clear precedent for American involvement in Soviet civil strife. The U.S. joined expeditionary forces to fight the Bolsheviks on behalf of the Mensheviks the constitutionally-minded reformers of the day. We did send troops into Archangel to contain the, contain the Bolsheviks, which is something that Stalin and his successors never forgot. As intriguing as historical parallels are, nobody can predict for sure what will happen. But Soviet history is replete with examples of difficult, pivotal transitions, fluid social change that is as bloody as it is hard to read. Now, I think they have a clear agenda. It's a typical Soviet way to uh, make it seem like they don't. In fact, uh, one of our sources in uh, an intelligence uh, organization tonight uh, called it uh, perhaps misinformation. Uh, the Soviets seem to do that a lot. Uh, I think they know exactly what they're doing, and I think that they will move when they feel like moving. Uh, but it's a, it's a typical Soviet tactic to create confusion and make you think they're confused, and that's the moment that they are the strongest. The rule outside of Moscow as well but also reports of Soviet troops moving against the personal security forces of the Latvian Prime Minister and taking over the television studios in neighboring Estonia just a few hours ago. This was the scene just a few hours ago in downtown Moscow after Soviet tanks tried to run barricades erected by Boris Yeltsin supporters. The scene played out in the very heart of the capital city where on a typical summer night many Muscovites go for a leisurely stroll. As these pictures attest, it was anything but a typical night. But after all, these are anything but typical times in Moscow or any place else in the Soviet Union. By day, the standoff was peaceful. But tonight, firing into the air, Soviet tank crews tried to crash through the outer defense. Unarmed citizens tried, sometimes successfully, to jam the tank tracks they threw stones at the tanks and draped them so their drivers couldn't see. Some of the tanks were set on fire. The tankers fought back. Some protesters were crushed, some shot. A whole line of buses, one of the barricades, went up in flames. Earlier, the protests were peaceful but massive. In Moscow, demonstrators carrying a huge flag of the Russian Republic filled the main street. In Leningrad, another 200,000 massed in anger, and in Moldavia, 400,000 more. Boris Yeltsin, the democratic reformer and elected president of the Russian Federation, has become the leader of the resistance, denouncing the coup today as a grave crime and demanding that its leaders be punished. Late tonight, several tanks and their crews joined the protesters, and others refused to confront them. These people, well, 
some do have some difficulties. Pablo has some medical uh, problems, and he is uh, not able to work in the committee. But the uh, functions of the committee is proceeding. Well, you, you are a member of the, uh, of the Air Force. Do you know, in fact, whether or not the defense minister, Dmitry Yazov, has resigned? I telephoned uh, this night at uh, 12.30 and called Yazov's office, and his adjutant told me that Marshal Yazov is uh, still on his, at his post. So how would you respond? I, I know you've been listening to our broadcast. How would you respond to uh, comments that the coup seems to be crumbling, that uh, some others are falling away? I wouldn't start making such uh, conclusions at this time. The situation is quite complex. Uh, there seems to be a duality in power. And, of course, the result will be uh, found out just in a few days from now. I wouldn't uh, exaggerate the significance of the, or I should say, inf influence of uh, Mr. Yeltsin just now because we do have some facts available to us that his role is not as great as it may seem. If we're to take the population with its 10,000 population and we see that we have uh, some 20, 30, well, perhaps 40,000 people who came out in the streets to uh, defend Yeltsin, that is a lot less than uh, Yeltsin supporters may have expected. Colonel Oxness, you have been... Uh... And the fact that uh, Yeltsin's appeal Colonel Oxness, you have been calling for this kind of move, for a state of emergency for some time. Are you satisfied with the way that the ruling committee is carrying it out? Are they moving fast enough? Are they moving forcefully enough? The fact is that when I advanced this plan, I had a serious difference in it. I suggested that we stick to the Constitution very strictly. This committee should be created by the Congress of the People's Deputies. And here is some doubt about the legitimacy of the committee which was uh, formed. And therefore, the decision of the Supreme Soviet will be necessary in order to um, establish this legitimacy of this committee. Therefore, there are some uh, differences in my program and that which is being done today. For the time being, I am not able to uh, give you my attitude towards this committee. I do see a positive step, though, and that this committee's creation has saved the Constitution of the USSR because, because the Union Treaty has been disrupted, the signing of it, which was supposed to take place yesterday. And the fact that uh, this process was disrupted, I see this as a positive. The rest, uh, as far as the rest is concerned, I'm not prepared to uh, make comments now. Colonel Oxness, one last question, and I'd ask you to answer it very briefly if you could. Do you believe that the military troops should move to dislodge Yeltsin from the Russian parliament building? Gunfire erupted near the parliament building only a few hours after the curfew began. Witnesses say two people were killed when protesters trapped a tank beneath an underpass and the soldiers inside opened fire. They say the shooting began when one man tried to climb on top of the tank. Soviet tanks are the targets of rocks and firebombs. Demonstrators also took aim with anything else they could find. Armored personnel carriers tried to break through barriers set up to slow them down. In this case, a row of buses. The protesters are defying a clampdown by the new Soviet leadership. It's put them under a curfew, but thousands of people surrounding the Russian parliament remain defiant. The protesters protecting Boris Yeltsin say they've convinced nine of the tank drivers to give up their arms and join their cause. The protesters then rode on the tanks to the Russian parliament building.